Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now. Today we're going to talk more about web app pen testing. And if you remember in our last video, which you should go back and check it out if you haven't already, we went ahead and set up DVWA, or otherwise known as Damn Vulnerable Web App. And that is to give us a private environment to, you know, learn more about, you know, certain types of attacks, uh, you know, and injections and all sorts of good stuff. Um, so starting off in, in sequence, the very first thing that we're going to check out uh, is the brute forcing option. Now brute forcing is usually something that's very noisy. We don't necessarily always recommend it, uh, you know, but in a pen test, if you're doing like a password audit or something to that uh, nature, or even, you know, some sort of security audit, PCI, DSS compliance, or whatever, they have, you know, web apps uh, with logins. That's something that you may want to explore. Uh, so that being said, let's go ahead and uh, go forward here in the slides. So our lesson plan on brute forcing. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is set up Burp Suite as a web proxy. Uh, we're going to be using Hydra to crack usernames and passwords. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about HTTP methods, specifically GET and POST, uh, and we're going to get into how that all works. And then also we're going to talk a little bit about form data and parsing needed information from the data. So brute forcing form logins, things you're going to need is DVWA, of course. Like I said, there's a link right here to the video that uh, we set it up and showed you how to configure it. Uh, Kali Linux 2.0, hopefully you're on that now, and that's why you're watching some of these videos. If not, go ahead and get that. But realistically, any Linux, Unix operating system will do. Uh, Hydra command line version comes installed, pre-installed in Kali Linux 2.0, as well as Hydra GTK, which is cool. Uh, that's the web UI, or not the web UI, but the GUI front end of um, Hydra. Burp Suite, uh, the free edition is pre-installed into Kali Linux. You may run across something where you need to you know, set it up while you're uh, starting it for the first time, uh, but it's usually just yes or no answers. Use your own discretion there. Um, web browser, of course. I use IceWeasel as a default in Kali Linux. Uh, you Feel free to use whatever you want, but uh, IceWeasel is what I'm going to be using here. And then, of course, the username and password list, and Kali Linux has an abundance of them uh, in various directories in the pen test stuff, so check those out. You can also find some online, uh, and on our website today, I actually posted the top 30 uh, passwords that were cracked from the whole Ashley Madison hack, and quite honestly, both parties, uh, Ashley Madison and the users, should be ashamed. The users for creating such crappy passwords, and then, of course, Ashley Madison for not having a good password uh, policy you know, seeing how their business was what it was. <laughs> okay, so moving forward, guys, let's just briefly talk about HTTP methods because we're going to be kind of using those buzzwords here and there as we're going through. So the get method, and, and of course, it's part of the HTTP protocol, uh, and, and it all happens behind the scenes, but we're going to be taking a look at behind the scenes here and seeing how they actually do work. Um, whenever you visit a web page, you're using usually a get command to get the files or get the web uh, page information, data, so on and so forth. Uh, and you're basically making a request to get that stuff. Uh, post method is actually used to post data to something, usually a form. Uh, of some sort or some sort of input. Uh, it's basically you're inputting something to somewhere. So that being said, let's go ahead and get out of the presentation here and get on over to starting our setup. Now, uh, I went ahead and created myself a cracking directory here in my home folder on Kali Linux, uh, being a regular user with sudo or privileges. Um, what I want to do here is you can obviously download or use whatever password list and username lists uh, that are included in Kali Linux or download them from wherever. Uh, however, I'm just going to create two quick files here, just a usernames and a passwords list, and just throw a couple usernames and passwords in these files for time's sake here. So I'll go ahead and use VI. You can use whatever you want, or like I said, you can get them from anywhere. Uh, usernames.txt, and I'm just going to go ahead and insert some random usernames here. Okay. Oops. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing for a passwords list.
some of these passwords, surprisingly enough, were used by Ashley Madison. So go on and check out our uh, website, learn.sec.blogspot.com, and check out the latest posting, and you'll see it. Uh, let's see. Okay. That should be enough. Just give us a couple here for speed purposes or for time for the video. Now you can see I have both of my files there. Let me just go ahead and clear out the screen. Okay, so the very first thing I guess I'm going to go ahead and show you guys is how to um, do a little bit of information gathering here uh, while we're working on our project. So let's just open up our, and remember of course just to visit the video there about uh, configuring and setting up, starting up um, DVWA, but let's just go ahead and open up our DVWA main login page here. Of course the username is admin. Password is password for the default. And let me go ahead and scroll down here, make sure security level is low. If it's not, go ahead and change it, guys. Uh, we went through that in the last video as well. Let's go over to our brute force um, you know, section here. This is where we're starting off. Uh, and brute forcing, basically, like I said, is just to guess usernames and passwords of some sort of uh, secure area. Um, it could be an application, it could be a web application, it could be a portal, it could be all types of different things. Uh, it could be mail servers, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And we did some brute forcing videos with Hydra GTK uh, previously about cracking mail server passwords. I believe it was in our low level, low tech, um, you know, hacking website defacing uh, video that we made. That being said, the very next step here is the very first thing you want to do is check out the source code of the page. So just right click anywhere in there, go to view page source. Now let's go ahead and expand this up. Now just to quickly find the data, I use control F for find or the search. And I just type in form because that's all I'm interested in is the form data. Well you can see here form action is a pound sign and method is get. So it looks like it's using some sort of form in of itself. It's probably getting some parameters and I guess um, using PHP programming you can actually use a get request to get parameters and match them up for what's expected. Uh, you can see the username field the input type is text and the name is username. Now that's the actual name that's submitted to the PHP document uh, that it's actually getting. Usually uh, forms post data, right? And usually get is to request something to be pulled down to view it. Um, but in this case, they're being a little tricky here and they're using some get um, get data to send the data over and match it up. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much of PHP programming here. Um, that's not the scope of this video. So the next input type is password and the type uh, being password is actually um, it, it's it's changing your password what you type in instead of being clear text it's changing into decimals dots asterisks uh, whatever uh, so nobody can shoulder surf you and try to look at your password of what you're typing uh, autocomplete is off and the name is password now another important field that should be here uh, if a programmer was actually thinking uh, would be a maximum password length or a maximum length for that input box so you can only type say 20 characters uh, total. So um, sometimes there's min, max, I mean it it de really depends on the programmer. And then of course it's submitting the value login and the name login so that's some sort of parameter into the script that's posting this or actually sending this over to. So that being said let's just go ahead and get out of this. Let's uh, just try any random username here and password. Just put uh, wrong user and then wrong pass and see what happens. Okay, so obviously it didn't let us in. Uh, a couple interesting tidbits of information here is the error message that it outputs on the bottom of our screen here. That's pretty important. We're going to want to use that actually. And then to look at the actual URL up here to get yourself an idea of what's actually taking place here. So of course it's sending over the username equals wrong user and password equals wrong pass, which is what we just typed in and it's saying login equals login so do the login is basically the uh, what's what's happening here so let's not go ahead and worry about this URL right now what I would love to do here is worry about this um, this error message so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this here 
I'll open up a LeafPad um, document just to start keeping notes. Always a good idea, guys. If you watch some of our other videos, I'm all about keeping notes, uh, accurate notes, as you're going through your pen test. Uh, it may or may not help you for your final report, but it, it just helps you to keep your, your mind moving forward and lessen the amount of stuff you have to remember on the fly. So I just want to go ahead and type in error message here. Okay, that's our error message. And then go down a couple of lines here. Go back up to our website. Now is where I'll copy the actual link. And I'll just put URL. Alright. So now we got some little bit of information here and let's go ahead and go forward with actually um, creating whoops creating the setup. Now what Burp Suite is, among many other things, is a web proxy or a proxy for us. Now, when you think about a web proxy, think about a man in the middle attack. And for those of you that may or may not be familiar with what a man in the middle attack is, let me give you a quick refresher. A man in the middle attack is basically you as the attacker sitting in between two people communicating. Let's say user A is trying to send a message over to user B to say, hey, how's your day going? User A sends it out thinking he's sending it to user B in the packet, the headers, and all that stuff, which we'll get to in some advanced videos. But user A is sending that uh, message intended for user B to user B. You're sitting in the middle. It now comes to you first. You look at it, take a copy of it, what have you, and forward it on over to user B. User B sees user's a mess user A's message and responds back with, hey, my day's great, how's yours, or whatever, and goes and sends it back to user A. But instead, it now comes back to me first. I look at it, take a copy of it, what have you, and I forward it on over to user A. User A and user B never know that I'm there. So it's basically eavesdropping. That being said, that's how we're going to use Burp Suite today. Let me just go back and get ourselves set up here to the main site. Now I want to go ahead and go into our menu, Applications menu, and Web Application Analysis and Burp Suite. Now, again, like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, I don't remember, but I think when you fire this up for the first time, it may ask if you want to submit data or something. And like I said, guys, just use your best discretion, of course. Um, but this is the free edition. They do have a professional edition, which does cost, uh, I think it's like 299 bucks for the year, but it does give you some added functionality. It gives you some vulnerability analysis and things like that. You might get this uh, error message here for new versions available. I'm not worried about it. I'll wait for it to come out in the repos, but you certainly could go to their website and pull down the latest version. So that being said, uh, what we want to do here is go up to the proxy tab here on the very top. You notice that intercept is already set to on, which is good. Then we're going to go over to options, and this usually should be filled out for you. If not, you can always add or edit it. Just go ahead and click it, click edit, and you can change the binding port here to whatever you want, 9999, 1234, whatever you want, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it to 8080, and I'm going to bind to the address loopback only, and I'm just going to go ahead and cancel out of this. And uh, of course, all the other options that are down here, you certainly feel free to um, scroll down and check some of them out. Uh, intercept client requests, I just go ahead and leave that the way it is. Most of the defaults are pretty good for what we're going to be doing here in this demo. So now I go back to our intercept tab. Intercept is on. But now you're saying to yourself, well, how are we going to intercept the data? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Well, here's the key. So you have to go into your browser. Uh, again, I'm using the latest and greatest of IceWeasel here. Go to File, uh, I'm sorry, Edit and Preferences. And you can see it opens up another tab here. You want to go under your Advanced uh, on your menu option here on the left and go to the Network tab and then Connection here and go ahead and click on settings. You're going to want to go ahead down to manual proxy configuration. You can see I've already had mine filled out here, but just type in the address of your local loopback, which is excuse me 127.0.0.1 and go ahead and put the port to whatever you set the port to in um, Burp Suite. So now that that's good, we just click OK and we can go ahead and close out this tab. So now we really have a, a man in the middle attack, an eavesdropping attack, uh, i.e. proxy, in between the requests that we send out to the web and what the web actually sends back to us. Now we're in full control of this. We have to choose to either forward it, inspect it, drop it. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do, but uh, let's get set up and get started. 
So we need some information. Uh, I want to look at the post or the get request and I want to actually see what's going on in there. So again, what we could try to do here is now we got Burp Suite going and we're on the intercept tab. Intercept is on. There is no raw data in here at all. Let's go ahead and just type in the dummy username and password again. Wrong user and then wrong pass and hit login. Now this time you'll see what the actual request looks like. So again we're using get. Let me just move this over so it's... there we go. We're using a get request. Oops, sorry about that. Using a get request and we are requesting DVWA vulnerabilities brute and then username equals wrong user and password equals wrong pass and login equals login. Well that's what we saw in the URL but sometimes the URL doesn't actually show the parameters, right? Sometimes the programmer had half of a brain and uh, won't disclose those details. So that being said, this is where this comes in to play as to being important. Uh, there's some critical information in here that we need to go ahead and copy. So the very first thing I would do here is copy the actual request method. So just go copy this, go back into our note pad and go ahead and post that in there. Go back to Burp Suite. Uh, stepping down, you can see it just is using the protocol version of HTTP. HTTP is version 1.1. That's fine. We don't care about that really at this point. Um, the host is localhost, so we can go ahead and control C that and step on down two lines. Paste that in there. Now again, guys, it's all about building your information here. So user agent, um, we don't really need that, but that's what it tells the web server uh, what versions of software are using, you know, Linux, um, you know, what version of browser we're using, Firefox, Iceweasel, same thing, and it's Mozilla 5.0. Uh, except um, text HTML applications, that's all the uh, different file types and encodings it accepts. Uh, language is English, except encodings or gzip and deflate. Uh, the refer is where we came from, not necessary to copy this at this point, guys, because uh, we pretty much already have all that information up here and again in our host that we copied. So here's where it gets uh, intense to you have to have this information and and it's weird and we'll, I'll explain it to you as we get to that point but realistically the reason why you gotta have this right here your cookie information is because of the way DVWA is set up. Now I guess in part it's actually a good idea to go through this now so when you come across this later in your pen testing career you'll you'll know why. Um, so the reason behind this is because when you go to your default DVWA installation and you fire it up on the, on the web browser for the first time you're greeted with that first login screen like you saw earlier in the video. Now that being said you have to log into there to be able to make any kind of you know navigation changes on the menu and so on and so forth. So um, where this would apply is if you're doing a pen test say for a company and they have like a some sort of shout box or a forum software and you think you know hey there might be a vulnerability in there I need to get to an admin page but you can't just find an admin login first they have to log in as a regular user and this is the way it used to be on uh, PHP bulletin board software PHP BB back in the day I haven't used it now so I don't I don't really know for sure but you had to log in under your regular user account and then you could click the admin tab once you logged in and then it would prompt you with an admin login so if you wanted to try to brute force that admin login there was no other way to get there besides being pre-authenticated with a regular user account like I said. So what I would did is I would log in as a create a regular user account, I'd log in, grab that PHP session ID, the cookie, and then I'd use that in my data and I'd send it out to authenticate and then try to crack the admin login and that's what we're going to try to do here. Hopefully that makes sense because sometimes things buzz around in my head and maybe they don't really make sense to anybody else but uh, I think it's pretty clear and easy to understand. So let's go ahead and copy this and just go ahead and paste it in there. Okay, so we have really all of our necessary details here and in Burp Suite of course you can see that nothing has changed yet and it's still thinking up here, still loading because we didn't hit forward. All right, we just held that request hostage if you will. But now that we hit forward, you can see that now went ahead and it posted our error message, which we already checked out before because we were just doing some basic checks before uh, we tried to fire up any tools on it. And you can see that we had that error message up here. That's going to be important for 
in just a few minutes here when we start to use uh, Hydra to crack the username and password. Okay, so at this point, uh, we're pretty much kind of done with Burp Suite. We can turn Intercept off. Uh, we can actually go back to our DVWA, uh, go back to our browser anyway. Let's go back into Preferences, um, Advanced down here, Network, of course, Settings. Well, let's just go ahead and take our proxy off because we don't really need that anymore uh, at this point. We've got all of our information that we need. Let's close out that tab. Okay, so now is when we get into working with Hydra. And let me just go ahead and make this bigger so we can actually see what we're doing here. All right, so Hydra is simply issued by the command Hydra. And for the help file, it's TAC help. And you can see we got a lot of information here. Um, I, I'm going to forewarn you guys that Hydra is very, very, very sensitive, very, very picky uh, in the way that the syntax is uh, used, uh, capitals and non-capitals, lowercase stuff, uh, the the position of your actual commands in series with the rest of the commands. I mean, it's it's ultra picky. So if you do run into when you're when you're practicing this on your own if you do run into where you know it's giving you error messages or it's taking way too long and you're, you're thinking like hey you know I'm doing a test here uh, on DVWA and I only got three usernames and three passwords why is it taking a half an hour it shouldn't uh, check your syntax first and foremost um, it took me a good solid like hour to try to figure out how to properly line everything up to actually get this to work to show you guys so that being said, also when I do find that uh, you know it takes me a while to figure out syntaxes and just the right way to fire something off, whether it be an exploit or uh, commands into a, a program or something, um, I actually copy that and put it into a text file with commands. And so I can use it as a reference to go back to that next time if I forget something or get something wrong or, or just to save time. So I've actually done that here and I'll, I'll show you that in just a minute. But just to go through some of the options here, uh, and I'm not going to go through all of them, guys, because feel free to read this on your own. Do a little bit of homework. Um, first and foremost, TAC capital R restores a previous aborted crash ses crashed session. So if you're in the middle of it and you're like, man, something don't seem right, you can control C out of it and you know maybe make some adjustments or whatever, and you can actually just fire up Hydra with TAC capital R, and it'll restore the previous uh, aborted session. So uh, that being said... Um, the next ones we're really going to follow up on here is these right here, and I will show you why and explain to you why in just a second. So, uh, TAC lowercase l login. Uh, login here would be the place of your username. So let's just say we're doing a password audit, and our our client gave us all the usernames, or we somehow did some social engineering, or uh, use like Recon NG or something to find all of the usernames. Um, and enumerated them for that organization, but we're doing a weak password audit, and so we just you know have a password list with just your very common you know top 1,000 passwords or something, uh, and then that's part of our our audit. That's where this would come in to save some time. Um, TAC cap or TAC lowercase L, and let's say we're after the username uh, Mary. Okay, we would type in TAC capital L Mary, and uh, on the same token, if you were after a, a ton of users, let's say you had to audit the whole entire organization, okay, um, you know, when there was like 50 users in there or something, and you enumerated all 50 users, you could use attack capital L followed by the path to your usernames file that you had created. Again, we created a usernames.txt and a passwords.txt in our cracking directory in our home directory. So. Uh, that being said, there's a very big difference between TAC lowercase l and TAC capital L. Now, moving on down the list here is TAC lowercase p for password. Let's just say you wanted to audit all 50 users and you're only interested in the users that had weak passwords like um, password, for instance, or QWERTY123 or something. You would type in uh, TAC lowercase p and then password or QWERTY or something for one individual password. If you, however, wanted to do another you know, password audit, you would type, type in um, TAC capital P followed again by the syntax or the uh, location of your password file. 
So that's two big differences there. That's something that's pretty important, and I'll show you why in just a little while. Uh, you can use colon separated files, guys. You could use uh, a list of servers. You know, if you were auditing a, a company's mail servers, for instance, uh, and they had a bunch of them for, you know, failover or whatever, you could certainly go ahead and do that. You can write the found login passwords to an output file as opposed to the ST out, STD out, which is live to you on the screen. Uh, going down the list here, there's not really much else in those options that we're concerned with, except for verborous mode, always if there's an option for that, I recommend and this in this case is TAC capital V uh, and then that shows the login password for each attempt you can just do the lowercase v just for verbose mode um, let's see here so then the other options that we have here are supported services now these are actual individual modules and I'll show you how to look those up in just a second so supported services are asterisk Cisco Cisco enable Firebird FTP FTPS and then where we're concerned is HTTP and HTTPS um, the head and get requests or the HTTP and HTTPS get and post tack form uh, module which we're trying to attack a form to log in so we need to use that to be able to find out which module has you know whatever usage details there's a separate command here it's TAC capital U followed by the module name you're looking to use to get information specific to that module so let's go ahead and just issue that real quick so it's Hydra TAC capital U and then HTTP TAC get TAC post I believe it is or no uh, HTTP TAC get TAC form and now it gives you a whole different set of uh, usages for that specific module. Now, the thing is, modules in here are called a specific way. They're called a different way than what you're used to in MSF console and you know uh, social engineering toolkit and recon ng and all those good tools. Uh, and I'll show you that in a little bit as well. So that being said, you can go ahead and feel free to read through these guys as you're using them. Um, we will show you the syntax of the commands we're going to use in just this uh, demo here uh, and then I'll go over them in detail and they, they of course give you some examples like they did on the other page um, and that's pretty cool because at least you have an idea of where to where to go here uh, what we might want to check out here is I believe it's in here um, you can you can enter in your failure messages uh, and or success and I think that's right up here third is the the string that it checks for is in an invalid login by default uh, invalid condition login check can be preceded by F equals which is a success condition uh, or I'm sorry successful condition login check must be preceded by the S equals so we took our failure message if you remember from when we logged in with the wrong username and password when we were doing our initial recon on the uh, form itself. Let's go back and I'll show you how that all works. I'm just going to go ahead and clear out the screen here. Now again guys, like I said, it took me a while to get the syntax exactly perfect since this uh, system is so picky 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 about it. So I copied it and pasted it into my commands file here just to show to save some time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and paste this. Now I know you guys that have been following me from the beginning, you know that I hate copying pasting codes and commands and things like that. I like to type everything out manually. It's just me. That's how I am. Uh, but in this case, it's going to save a tremendous amount of time besides screwing around with syntaxes and whatnot. So just to go ahead from the very top here, once I get my cursor all the way to the top, we will step through it left to right and we will explain each and every section. So getting back up here, of course we call it by Hydra and then we're going to follow it by our host which in, if you remember we went to here and our host was localhost but I mean realistically we know that that's 127.0.0.1 um, I just use the IP address because it's a little bit easier uh, followed by TAC capital V because I want to show all of the you know failed attempts make sure I'm not missing anything and then of course uh, tack capital L and then the route or the path to where my usernames file was that we just created in the beginning of the video 
then followed by TAC capital P, uh, which then shows you the same directory to where the actual passwords file is. And then here comes our module. So like I was saying about MSF console, uh, you know, set the social engineering toolkit, recon ng, and all of the other goodies, uh, you know, that uh, have uh, modules or availability to call in modules uh, and give them syntaxes. This one's different. Instead of like a load module XYZ in, for instance, MSF console, this one here, you just put in the actual module. And like I said, it's very important to have this in a certain um, way or, or a certain order. Uh, so as not to get screwed up. So we're using the HTTP TAC GET TAC FORM module, which is what we saw in our data from Burp Suit. Is it's actually using a GET request to put the parameters in. Uh, and so going back over here, working our way down now, we had to put in um, the actual path on the website, uh, in this case, to where our form lives. And of course, just going back up to our notepad here guys to be a little bit redundant it came right after the get request and that's actually where our form lives is right here in brute uh, so forward slash dvwa forward slash vulnerabilities forward slash brute so then going back up there now here's the weird thing is every time you want to you know use a parameter here with a variable uh, you have to put in a colon very super important. So username, as we saw in our request, username equals, and we put wrong user, going back here, username equals now, and I don't know what you call these symbols, guys. I call them up arrows. I mean, you can call them upticks. I don't really care. <laughs> but um, user, in all capitals, is specifying to say, hey, if we issued the TAC capital L command, let's go ahead and use those usernames in this text file or in the usernames file for this matter um, in order top to bottom in sequence and then stepping forward our next parameter is obviously the password as we saw again in here our next parameter here is password that's passed on to the login script and the same idea here the uptick arrows um, capitals all capitals pass says hey if we're using attack capital P go ahead and you whoops oh boy uh, go ahead and use the um, you know passwords from top to bottom in here stored in this directory in the passwords.txt file moving on uh, let me just scroll down a little bit here to get the rest of this stuff into focus so moving on and then it says go to uh, end login equals login so that's the that's what it's telling us do the login and then of course now here's where our error message comes in now we need this for error checking right otherwise it would just go into an infinity loop because we don't know whether or not you know we got a, a good login or a bad login I mean it's not actually you know gonna tell you like yeah okay uh, server message 200 okay you're in um, so we need to tell them okay uh, colon F for the failure message equals and we saw that in the module help file that we just looked at before equals incorrect now if you remember our error message was the whole thing was username and or password incorrect with a period well we snipped all that because we just don't feel like you know writing things out forever so I just used incorrect because and in my testing obviously uh, a successful connection is not going to say incorrect right a successful login will say it won't say the incorrect successful login so it wouldn't make sense so that being said we use the error message because we want to know when it's actually guessing wrong. Now here's where the cookie comes in. So again, another colon and the cookie with the PHP session ID. Now again, guys, this is very um, important in this in this way because we're using our regular system or our regular account to step up and try to get admin status in this special admin portal or whatever. Okay, so if this was just a web-based form hanging out there that was like admin login.php of course we wouldn't really need a cookie with the PHP session ID so now I obviously had this pre uh, copied and pasted so I'm just gonna go ahead and erase this just the numbers here then I'm gonna go into my notes document I'm gonna go ahead and copy just the ID number and control C and then just paste it in here 
and then security equals low. Now for whatever reason, this is why I said it's very, very picky, for whatever reason I had security equals low before PHP session ID and it wouldn't work and I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, I don't, I don't seem to understand. I mean, that's what the way it was in the header and what the hell. <laughs> so uh, it's very, very picky guys and I changed it around and it seems to work fine. So go figure. Um, I don't know if that's a bug or if it's intentional. I have no idea. It's probably the way that uh, Hydra parses the data to send it over in that module. So that being said, let's go ahead and fire this bad boy off. Go ahead and hit enter. And you can see it scrolls past pretty quick. Uh, of course, obviously we're working local. We didn't do rate limiting or anything else. Um, if you had a password lockout policy, unless you intend to launch a denial of service, a user level denial of service attack to lock out people from their accounts, you might want to mess around with some of the syntaxes of the rate limiting to you know how much time in between requests and uh, how many attempts per uh, username and password and so on and so forth. Um, but we're not interested in that at this point, but that, that will be something in our advanced series that we're going to be doing on our website, not on YouTube. So look forward to that. Um, so anyway, it goes past, and you could say it says, uh, see it says max 16 tasks per one server. Overall 64 tasks, 42 login tries, uh, and so on and so forth. It's attacking the service with the HTTP GET4 module on port 80 and it goes to target localhost down here and it tries to log in Bob with the password name, uh, password username and then it tries again Bob with the password 123456 and then it it tries it all the way down to an empty password which we know is not it uh, and then it goes to the next lady or next person in the list Mary in this case and Joe and so on and so forth going all the way down here until it actually found the login and again, it found that these people up here were not uh, part of the system anyway, or at least they didn't have the correct combination between a username and a password because of that error message that we put into the module. So once it found that it did not meet an error message, the error message was not displayed, it said, okay, the username's got to be admin and password. So it's a good way of checking things out uh, in terms of being able to get a proper username and password guess. So that being said, we know that our login is now admin and password. If we went back up to DVWA, at this point here, I just want to go ahead and refresh the page. Admin and password. So go ahead and log in. And sure enough, you can see that we logged in, and here would be our success message. But us as pen testers, we're never going to know that success message to send with the module until we actually log in, right? So of course we have to use an error message. Now a lot of times uh, form data doesn't give you an error message. It'll simply just refresh the page and you're kind of SOL uh, in that regard. So it automatically tries to use, um, I don't want to say the different codes, but there's certain response codes that it'll use to determine whether or not it's successful or it's failed. So that's in the HTTP, uh, HTTP headers as well. But again, guys, when we do the advanced series of this, which is actually going to be specifically hosted on our website as a uh, classroom training or, or on-demand training, um, we'll get into all that good stuff. And we'll get into it in great detail and depth. And there'll be slides available and videos to download and study guides and all sorts of good stuff. So look forward to that. Um, I don't want to go too much further on that because uh, I'm still working on it. So that being said, we logged in here. Uh, we successfully set up a man in the middle burp, uh, proxy attack, if you will. We intercepted data being sent to and from the web server. Uh, we interpreted this data. We figured out what methods it was using to put the data to the website or get data from the website uh, or from the form and to the form. Uh, we used that data and we crafted a very stealthy attack via the um, Hydra, you know, brute forcing attack. Uh, we've created usernames, passwords, files, which obviously you guys can do on your own there. Uh, and we successfully broke into a login. Now, again, guys, this wasn't that hard because we kind of know all this stuff already. Um, but it's good to test this in your own environment because, like I said, you can do a user-level denial of service attack on accident if there was a strict password lockout policy, right? So so automated controls, it will uh, it will really screw up um, you know your clients. So that's something that has to be in your contract as well. Uh, just know that. 
So that's pretty much it, guys. It wraps it up for this. Um, in other news, uh, you know, I really do appreciate again all the all the support. Uh, you know, the likes, the subscribes, the shares, uh, the people following me on Twitter. I really, really appreciate that. Hey, you guys are doing an awesome job. So if you don't mind, like, subscribe, and share this video here. Uh, check out the uh, description for all the links to certain things, especially our website and the Twitter. Uh, I'm not really big on the Google Plus things, guys. So if you got things you want to check me out on, just always default to Twitter or our blog, which is learnnetsec.blogspot.com for the time being. Um, so that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.